some places where St. Paul traveled turn out to be very inhospitable, out front hostile. In Lystra, there was such an uproar against him that the crowds stoned Paul and dragged him out of the city, supposing that he was dead. What an adversity that he's facing. An opposition. But when the disciples gathered around him, he got up and entered the city. Some attribute this whole happening that he actually got up to the intercession of the church. That although truly hurt because the stoning was the punishment leading to death, most probably everybody thought Paul was dead. And yet the prayers of the brothers brought him back. And what is amazing that later on we find out as he traveled to other cities, then he returned to Lystra. Didn't he have PTSD? We usually tend to avoid places where we were not welcomed. We would have never decided going back to where we had experienced so much adversity and hatred. What did motivate Paul that despite the hostility aware he was facing another uproar, stoning and beatings, he went back out of love for the community of the brothers. Something that goes against our understanding. We would say, don't go there, flee, because only problems are awaiting you in Lystra. But when Paul and Barnabas went back to Lystra, they strengthened the spirits of the disciples and exhorted them to persevere in the faith. What was more important than their own well-being for Paul and Barnabas was to convey with their own attitudes and just by the mere fact that they went back, the fact that there is something greater than our human life and well-being here on earth, which is the faith. The faith. Let's be aware that we would probably say nowadays, well, if your life is threatened, you can always deny. You can always find a way out to bypass your um, unfriendly environment. And instead, he strengthened the spirits of the disciples. This is what they need. And this is what we need to be strengthened in our spirit, in our faith, because it's very easy to give up on the Lord. Not only in the face of adversities, because right here, even though on the outside things are smooth, but now the entire culture, the woke culture, turns against all the Christian values, undermining everything that is, um, let me say, decreed by the Lord, everything that um, He wanted us to embrace the faith, the values, the family the sanctity of marriage, of the children, everything that we believe that is coming from God now is undermined and soon will be aggressively um, questioned, where we will not have any more a voice of saying what is right. Because as St. John Paul II teaches, today's culture is what was evil now is good. And what was good now is evil. Who messed up our minds so badly? The evil one working through the culture. And as Jesus speaks clearly um, to some of the mystics, 
that unless we are working for the kingdom actively and very specifically, we are actually doing, on the other side, the work of the devil. There is no middle ground, believe me. Either we are with him or against him. By our actions, by our way of uh, living, by what we are conveying. But what is of the utmost importance here is to persevere in the faith with everything that Paul and Barnabas had taught to the disciples in Lystra. What for to persevere? Because there is a different dimension in this life, the eternal dimension. If our faith were to be reduced to this horizontal dimension here and now, just getting few problems fixed and making sure that we'll force God or whoever is up there, as many people think, to make our life here more comfortable and secure, then, as St. Paul himself teaches, our hope is pitiable. It's pointless. It's better to change the religion that will provide more incentives, as number of people do. We know that this horizontal dimension here is meant to prepare us for the eternal life with God. Right at this stage, St. Paul says, it is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God just on a mere thought of what he just said, we would probably check out why to go through the hardships. There are many reasons. For example, as Jesus himself says, that this world lays in the hands of the prince of darkness. To work for the kingdom, having Jesus working along with us, granting us his spirit, pulling out people from the power of the darkness, it's a huge thing. Which means, as the exorcists teach, one of them, the famous Gabriele Amorth, the battle against the evil that is working in the lives of many people is a huge work, very difficult and very problematic. At the same time, this battle is against our own demons, our own weaknesses and doubts and everything that is working inside of us. And all the influences that we are receiving from the outside, there are hardships. But what would even make us go through this hardship to enter the kingdom? If not the fact that Jesus Christ promises and grants us his divine shalom, his peace. If we have never experienced his divine peace, that has nothing to do with the uh, tranquility that everything around us uh, would like sort of to provide. Divine peace is the shalom that comes from above, well-being, stability, health, prosperity, goodness, the presence of God himself that despite of the external adverse conditions we can experience right here. That was what was motivating St. Paul. Already in him, this divine peace found its place. And it must have been such a powerful experience that despite of all the adversities and the fear of death, of a possible stoning, it didn't de deter him. I'm truly moved thinking that Jesus provides us with the Spirit on a level that uh, can completely surpass our understanding. Right there, there is already an entrance to the kingdom the divine peace dwelling in us. So we are defending this peace in terms of um, not allowing the demons to steal it from us by um, 
what is being offered to us by different temptations. And that peace allows us to go against the current. It is necessary for us to undergo many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. If you have already the peace reigning in you, divine peace, then you are not afraid of being cast out, of being criticized, of being persecuted, of being even stoned, because Christ lives with you. Instead, if we don't have the divine shalom dwelling in us, then run, escape from any adversity and any problem and quickly embrace what the world is offering you as a way to um, calm down all the anxieties as few substitutes of uh, possible joys. This is what the people do. Absolutely, I understand them. If you don't have divine peace, you need to fabricate it, produce it in an artificial way through drugs. Get high then. Absolutely. Alcohol, any kind of ways of distracting yourself ah, to feel a little bit better, a little bit better. I understand you because you don't have divine peace. So you're fighting tooth and nail to defend a little bit of tranquility that you uh, manufacture and fabricate it for yourself. So we don't want to go through any hardships for any kingdom because our kingdom, tiny little hell of a kingdom is here and we will defend it till death. That is extremely uh, opposite side of what St. Paul is witnessing and is showing us. But again, if we never experience the divine peace and what Christ produces in us, we'll have to create our little uh, filthy hell-like kingdom defending it tooth and nail every single aspect of this life. Because at the end, as the world teaches us, it's only here on this earth. Tomorrow you will be dead, turned into dust, and there is nothing beyond that. Today's culture believes that. So let's get everything um, to turn for our benefit, suck every single juice from this life, because at the end, life is so uh, pitiable, miserable, and horrible that we need to create our own kingdom here. This is what the world would like us to believe. St. Paul says and shows something very different. Persecutions, struggles, trials, mocking, flogging, stoning will not quench the spirit that is within him and with those who truly received Christ's love in them.